Well, here's a unique perspective on how to uh, wire up a, a square D uh, switch. Uh, let's get the technicals out of the way. Uh, for a uh, Leeson uh, dual voltage, uh, two horsepower single phase motor, um, you'll uh, need to uh, wire it up in such a way that uh, that uh, P1 will uh, receive line one. Uh, P2 is capped off. It's not used for 220 volt operation. T3, T2, and T8 are all uh, fused together inside of the motor housing. T5, T4, and L2 are all um, inside of the motor housing. So what you're going to need to do basically is you're going to need to supply yourself with your uh, input wire. Uh, don't use this actual wire. This is just for illustration purposes. Um, your input wire, depending on how uh, big your horsepower is, this is for a two horsepower motor. You can probably get away with uh, probably 14 gauge would be fine. Um, but you can go heavier if you want. It's not going to hurt you anything, but you aren't going to gain really any, any advantage. Um, but this particular motor, um, we're going to wire up this uh, drum switch right here um, <coughs> from the motor. I already got this figured out. On um, Let's start with the, the motor connections. You, you'll actually um, take a cord from the motor. You'll make all your motor connections inside of there. You'll be extending uh, the cords basically out to the switch. Um, this switch is terminal one three and five are on this side. Terminals two, four, and six are on this side. Um, you're gonna get motor connections and uh, power connections on both sides of this switch. Um, you are gonna wanna put some kind of strain and relief on the bottom side of these, whether it's a, a little clamp or uh, some other fixture. They have some pretty nice uh, uh, plastic molded ones that are relatively inexpensive. You could get at the box stores, but uh, uh, definitely you want to, um, you know, terminate it somehow, or not necessarily terminate it, but you want to uh, hold it somehow that uh, isn't going to allow the wires to pull out or vibrate or anything to that effect. Um, let's just jump right up into this thing. Um, for the first connection here, um, we're going to go with uh, this little red wire. Is not necessarily the wire color that you have to use. It's just a represent representation of what you're going to be using. But uh, this one is going to be uh, terminal T4 from the motor. Um, it's actually going to end up, or excuse me, um, we're going to go. This one's going to be on number six. This will be uh, P1 from the motor is P1. Spade connectors on these things, but you can um, take it out and use the ring connectors. The spade connectors can slip out if there's a, a vibration issue. Um, the ring connectors won't ever vibrate out. You may loosen them up, but they'll never vibrate out. Okay, so that is a connection P1 on terminal six. Um, we got um, motor T2, or excuse me, T4 is going to come over to uh, terminal switch number four. T5 will come from the motor and we'll go on to switch terminal number two. Okay, just to recap here, we've got T5, we got T4, we got P1. Now we're going to flip this motor, or the switch over and um, do the other connections here. Okay, on this side we got one, three, and five.
Okay, so we're going to um, make a motor connection inside of the motor with terminals uh, T2 and T3. You're going to connect a wire to that and it's going to come all the way back out here to this switch and we're going to uh, add it to uh, switch terminal number one. Okay, and the very last motor terminal that you're going to have here is going to be coming from um, uh, T8. So there's going to be a wire that comes all the way over here. T8 will um, connect to switch terminal number three. What happens when you convert ring terminals to spade terminals? It can be a little difficult to get in. This is just for illustration purposes. Okay. Now, uh, basically, your motor wires of any consequence are all installed. P2 inside of the motor will be capped off and there will be no other um, uh, termination made on that. Um, now we're going to get into um, one more wire, excuse me, um, I'm sorry, you, you should include a, a ground wire from the motor uh, to the frame of the machine and uh, you should also do the same thing with your switch um, assembly here. And um, it never hurts to, uh, we're going to represent this as our power wires, our 220 volt uh, service from our house. Um, we're going to slip our uh, ground wire in there before we tighten this one up. Okay, so we got uh, two wires left um, in your, um, your service. Uh, like I said, you could probably use 14 gauge. Um, if you could use red and black, that's optimum because that's pretty much universal for 220 volts. But um, I didn't have a piece of that handy, so I just grabbed a piece of an extension cord here. But um, uh, the black, um, I, I get superstitious on it. I always like to make black L1. And um, this, when I'd normally be wiring 220 volts, would be red. And um, I use red as my L2. Don't ask me why. That's just the way that I've always done it. And um, pretty much everything I've ever wired, I, I do it that way. Um, it, it really doesn't matter. You could swap either one of those, and the motor will run. Um, it's just your, your personal preference at that point. Um, but uh, how I'm going to do this now is we're going to go ahead and make our... Um, line two connection over here. The hitch with this one is we have to connect it with the wire from T4, the motor terminal T4. And we're going to do that right here by loosening up this uh, spade terminal here and add this other one a little bit. All right, tighten that back down. Okay, so our T2, or excuse our L2, and T4 is on terminal 4. And you just want to make sure that the uh, um, switch terminal does not interfere with the operation. And these are kind of like spring-loaded, so they follow a cam. And uh, these are the actual connection bars that they make. Okay, the only uh, wire connection that we have uh, left made here is uh, L1 at uh, terminal number 5. Okay, now all of these wires end up Coming in.
And you're really lucky. They go out. Maybe not in the way that you want them to. But the idea remains. You tuck that all the way through. Um, have one side of it be your incoming power, uh, the other side being the uh, power going out to the motor. Uh, but uh, however way you wish to do that, um, that is your choice. And uh, what you want to do is make sure that all your uh, connections are tight. Not overly tight, but just snug. Never hurts to test them again unless you've over tightened them before and then they aren't going to get any tighter. But, all right. At that point, um, you could uh, put the plug on to this end and uh, make sure that your uh, motor connections are all right and then um, you could put power to it. When it's in the center position, there is no continuity between poles anywhere on this particular switch. Um, when you uh, flick it one direction, this is saying the forward direction on this one. Um, I guess it's relative to the, uh, the motor shaft position and how it's mounted. But um, anyways, um, you'll be running one direction this way. You will need to stop the motor in the direction, you know, the, the, make the lathe or the mill come to a complete stop. And then you click it the other direction and then the motor will start running in the other direction. Um, basically, you're, you're, you're swapping T5 and T8 internally inside of this switch. You click it back and that will stop operation once again. And you want it to come to a full stop before you click it the other direction. Otherwise, you're just going to put a load on the motor and the capacitor. And it uh, may continue to run in the unintended direction by flipping the switch too quickly. But um, uh, just for the peanut gallery, uh, the switch here is a square D class 2601 type AG-2. And uh, this is a reversing switch for a Leeson dual voltage on 220, 230 volts. Thanks for watching.